So, uh, RIP and peace to Stuart Haas Racing, I guess. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt. Stuart Haas Racing will shut its doors at the end of the 2024 season when the checkered flag falls at Phoenix. Four NASCAR Cup Series teams and two NASCAR Xfinity Series teams will cease to exist as we currently know them. Stuart Haas Racing will sell off the charters, the cars, the building, everything that goes along with it, and the entire operation will cease to exist. Dead. It ceased to live. It's deceased now. It's a highly unfortunate situation. I feel bad for all of the employees over at Stuart Haas Racing who had to sit around until 4 p.m. on Tuesday afternoon to ultimately get the news that they knew was coming to, you know, meet their fate in a sense. It's honestly kind of a cruel way to do it. Stuart, Tony Stewart was on campus at the shop today and apparently he was highly emotional about it and only if there's something he could have done to right this situation. Stuart Haas Racing was a powerhouse in the NASCAR Cup Series. I saw a couple of people be like, oh, you can't really classify them as a powerhouse. Two NASCAR Cup Series championships and 69 wins in basically 10 years. Yeah, that's being a bit of a powerhouse. They were the flagship four team and how the mighty have fallen at this point. Tony Stewart and Gene Haas were checked out like a senior in the final week of school. Absolutely no cares in the world for this team basically the last two years. You knew things were bad when Kevin Harvick took a jab at them when he was subbing for Kyle Larson at the All-Star Race, and they said, what's the difference between working with SHR and Hendrick Motorsports? And he said, well, I heard from the owner twice in two weeks, so that was different. Not exactly, you know, a resounding endorsement of the operations over at SHR. And then Harvick on his podcast today was like, how did we go from <laughs> forever to forward to for sale, all within basically a seven month period. The downfall is absolutely staggering. Not unexpected, but staggering. And for once, Joe Gibbs Racing isn't the one that ultimately brought a championship winning team to its demise, so that's a positive, I guess, in the right direction. But what brought them down their demise was the lack of leadership over at SHR. When you have two owners that are completely absent, one of them is trying to cosplay as a Formula One owner, the other one's trying to cosplay as a drag racer because he's just really into his wife. It's amazing the power that women can have over guys at times. The downfall of this team is directly attributed to just having zero leadership. There's only so much Greg Zipidelli can do. There's only so much these crew chiefs can do to try to lead this organization. And now being bold and unapologetic got them, I don't know, five months into the year. Not great. Their Twitter profile still has a graphic up that says smoke rises. Well, it rises after you drop a body. And it smacks the floor. And that's exactly what happened with Stuart Haas Racing. Smoke's rising because the downfall, the crumbling of a once great team in NASCAR, the dust hasn't settled. The smoke's still rising. And it's unfortunate. It's not going to rise out of the ashes like a phoenix, like RFK essentially has. Roush Racing was very much on its way to meet the same demise that Stuart Haas Racing has at this point. Thankfully for them, they were saved by Fenway Sports Group, and then Brad Kozlowski came in and really resurrected that organization and got them back to a race-winning team. Two cars that are both race-winning cars now. Stuart Haas Racing just went too far down the path to bring it back, essentially is what it came down to. And finding a buyer to buy a four-car Cup Series team is just hard to do. Uh, hard to do in the time frame that they probably wanted to do it in. So ultimately, they're going to sell off their four charters. Their four drivers, free agents now, by the sounds of it. Rodney Childers immediately becomes the most coveted free agent, driver, or team member in this current silly season. Where he ends up at, we don't really know yet. If he even wants to continue racing or being a crew chief. Uh, on a full-time basis. We'll have to wait and see what his decisions are. But you have a lot of people over at SHR that are now looking for a new job come next year. And that part of this, that's the part that sucks out of all of this. It's unfortunate that this happened and the poor leadership was the direct contribution to that. It's the direct result of not having good leaders. And you can trace it back to a few things, right? Kevin Harvick's wreck at Martinsville when he tried to intentionally wreck Kyle Busch there in the closing laps to advance in the playoffs. Yeah, that was bad. Ford not allowing Tony Stewart to sign Kyle Larson for the 2021 season. Ultimate bad decision by them. Ford not going out and getting Kyle Busch was another ultimate bad decision by them and by Stuart Haas not letting them do it. Imagine a team with Kyle Larson and Kyle Busch on it. That team does not close down. That team attracts sponsorship. But ultimately, when you build your entire organization around one guy being Kevin Harvick, and he leaves and his sponsors leave with him, that being uh, a number of them, but most notably Anheuser-Busch and that Bush Light sponsorship, they move over to Ross Chastain. SHR is looking to have to replace essentially 
60-ish races of 144 that they had on their cars uh, for the season, and they just you know couldn't do it. I mean, they have been. They've been piecing it together, but ultimately they never attracted another big sponsor since the end of last season when they lost Smithfield, they lost Anheuser-Busch, they lost Gear Wrench. They lost so many different sponsors, and they were never going to be able to fill that back out this year. And they go ahead and sign Noah Gragson, who's having a really stellar year so far. Um, much better than his first season last year over at Legacy. Josh Berry is finally hitting his stride. And, you know, that whole four team seems to really be coming together. Chase Briscoe is still out there running competitively. And Ryan Priest exists at this point, And hopefully he can turn it around. But it's a bummer to see a big-time organization like this go under. Um it, it sucks is really what it just comes down to. So what happens to their four charters? Well, right now, I think three are already spoken for. Front Row Motorsports is going to get one. 2311 Racing is going to get one. And Track House is going to get one as well. Who gets that fourth one? Uh, it kind of seems to be up in the air. Maybe between Legacy Motor Club, potentially with RCR. JTG Doherty Racing could be in the mix there. So their charters are going to be spoken for. What happens to their Xfinity program? I don't know. Brad Keselowski has talked about wanting to get RFK back into the Xfinity series. There's a turnkey operation available for them right now. Maybe that's something that they can look into. But ultimately, you know, those guys are all going to be looking for a new home. Driver-wise, it appears that Chase Briscoe is probably the favorite to land in that 21 seat over at Wood Brothers. Ford is high on him still. Uh, one NASCAR team manager said Chase Briscoe is the kind of guy that you go out and sign even if you don't have a spot for him. That's a bananas statement to me. But, you know, if you're high on him, maybe he could turn into something. But one win and four seasons and some change in the Cup Series doesn't exactly scream success so far. And granted, I know his team hasn't exactly been a resounding success. But Noah Gragson's name is going to be flirting around with a lot of teams. Obviously, if the limit on charters at three goes through that kind of limits his options but you know he could be in play at rcr if they add in a third charter where does josh berry go that remains a big question as well frm will have two seats available so does cole custer get one does josh berry get one does riley herps buy one but then you have to look at 2311 racing they're going to have a seat available so there's who's going to take that I think track houses are already spoken for between Zane Smith and Shane Van Gisbergen. We'll have to kind of see how that plays out over there. I'm interested to see what happens exactly for that third car. And then Legacy. I think that seat probably is good for Corey Heim if that's where he's going to go if they do land it. But, you know, there's a lot of driver market. There's a lot of uncertainty now for all of these guys. It, the Xfinity cars, you know, where those drivers go, like I said, Cole Custer could end up at FRM. Riley Herbst could be. I've heard a couple rumors about him and his family potentially making a play to, to land a Cup Series ride. So I think there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. But ultimately, it just comes down to being a really unfortunate situation for all the drivers involved, all the crews involved, all the people, the admin people that just work over at Sewer House Racing, the engineering side of it. There's a lot of good people that just, you know, found out that they're not going to have a job come this fall headed into the holiday season. And I think that part of it really sucks. So hopefully they land on their feet with these teams that are expanding. Um, obviously, everybody's talked about how hard it is to get people to work in NASCAR right now just because of the travel schedule. Everybody gets burned out. Hopefully there's some opportunities for people to land on their feet. But ultimately... Two championships, 69 race wins in the Cup Series, 98 race wins overall. Coming off, they're the defending Xfinity Series champions. Stuart Haas Racing will no longer exist when we roll into Daytona in 2025. And that's a huge blow to the sport. Not just from, you know, Tony Stewart not being involved anymore, Gene Haas not being involved anymore, but just from the standpoint of that's a flat, that's a tier one four team that's gone. And FRM will add in a car, but ultimately they're losing. It's a net loss of three you know when it comes down to it because they're only really adding in one more car there then three of their charters will be sold off to non-ford teams and ford just you know moved frm up to a tier one status they you would think might have to be going out and trying to find another team to add to the stable which they tried to do last year with 2311 racing and track house and maybe another team as well that they called around on maybe we could see that happen again this year but for now Stuart Haas Racing, gone at the end of the season, and their drivers very much up in the air on where they land at. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Like and subscribe to the channel. 
Uh, follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.